Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how to process your data that you just collected from that motion and graphical analysis lab. Here's all the different steps of the things that we're going to go through. Um, and so I'll periodically flip back over to this document here. Um, let's go ahead and get right to it though. Um, and if you want to process yours while I'm doing this, that's fine. Um, you could do it in a split screen sort of a thing. And you may find that it's easier to do on your computer. In fact, that's what this particular video is going to be, is how to do this on some kind of a computer. I'm using a Mac. You may have a PC. doesn't really matter. What, what I'm using is going to be Microsoft Excel for this video. And Excel is going to work the same pretty much on either uh, a Mac or a PC. Pretty much the same, minor differences. Um, if you want to see numbers, then try a different video, or if you want to do all the processing on your iPad, again, try a different video. So here we go. There's my exported data. All right, now what you're going to find, and this is new, it didn't used to be this way with the SparkView app, all of your runs are exported together, right? You can see here, these are all the run one things that it collected. Here's all the run two stuff, run three. So if you had a couple of crap runs that you didn't want. Um, now you have to go back and remember which one was which. All right, or before you exported it, you could have done the, uh, there's a menu where you can manage runs and delete data sets that you don't want. Um, turns out for me, I only want run three. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all those columns. I did that by clicking and now I'm just dragging the mouse over quite laboriously. Or I could have clicked on one, held down the shift key, and paged over using the arrow buttons on your keyboard. Okay, so all of those I don't want. I've highlighted the columns I don't want and I'm just gonna hit delete. And maybe I actually need to tell it to do one more thing which is delete those columns. There, all right, all the run three stuff is now where I want it. So that's, that's much better. Now, there's still some columns here I don't actually want. Um, time and position and velocity I want because I'm going to make graphs of position versus time and velocity versus time. I'm not actually going to make a graph of acceleration versus time because it's actually kind of useless and jittery, as it turns out. So instead, we just we won't do that one. In fact, we're going to delete that column too. Now. This other column over here next to it, you may have noticed that that seems like it's always the same number. It's like negative 1.1 or 1 occasionally. That right there is the built-in accelerometer from your iPad. So the SparkView app just records all of the data that's coming in from all of the different sensors that your iPad has, including the whatever sensor you have hooked up to it with the Pasco equipment. Um, so, you know, it has different direction accelerometers on your iPad um, to tell, you know, whether the screen is vertical or flat or whatever orientation it is. It's also picking up the noise in the room. Look at that noise in the room, guys. And we want exactly none of those columns. We'll just delete. All right, now we're down to actually the only data that we care about, which is time, position, velocity. If we want to graph, let's start with uh, how about time versus position. So that's that's going to be the first graph that we'll make. Uh, oh, excuse me. Let me flip back over to my list here. So what we just did was, number one, delete all of the extra columns, meaning the runs that were garbage and also the columns that had nothing to do with anything. All right. Now what we're going to do is create a scatter plot. And what this is going to do is allow us to delete individual data points that don't actually matter because actually there were a bunch of data points that we don't care about and if we leave them in there they're going to mess up our data. All right again we can highlight the columns that we want. Having these words up here isn't necessarily going to mess it up. Um, sometimes Excel is really clever and it can pick up titles for axes based off of whatever's at the top of the column. So if you want to actually go ahead and delete the words run three that might be a good idea. Let's see if Excel is really clever. Okay, so now I highlight my columns again. All right, next, to make a scatter plot, um, all versions of Excel are laid out a little bit differently, so probably insert. 
And then over here for this particular one is where the charts are, right? This right here is a scatter plot. That is the one you want. This one is a line plot. That sounds really tempting because, you know, like lines, that's a type of graph. You never want a line plot. I don't even know why they have it. It's kind of a stupid option. So we're actually going to pick scatter plot, of which there are several types. One has connect the dots. This one is don't show the dots, just connect them. Um, this is the one that you actually want. Don't connect them. Just pick that in there. Oh, hey, look at that. All right, and Excel was kind of clever. It came up with a title that involved the word position. All right, even though it should actually say something else. All right, and my data looks pretty good here. It's kind of small. Oh, I'll make it larger. And you can actually, uh, for that matter, blow this up and make it its own separate sheet in your spreadsheet. We'll do that in a little bit, but not right now. Um, so. Uh, this is actually just data from me moving my hand in front of the motion sensor. And at one point, oh no, something else blocked the sensor. That's what happened right there. So I have, a, I have some crap data points because here something different was happening. Like I stopped moving my hand. Um, and then here something else was happening. Uh, like I wasn't moving my hand. It was just there. So um, I've got a bunch of data, point that, data points that I'm going to delete because they don't seem to have anything to do with anything. And um, it looks like the good data starts around, I mean, the perfect data that's linear, you know, starts about here. I'm going to go with, um, how, about, how about we delete about there? Oh, look, if I put the cursor over it, it tells me the name of that point. It's 2.6 comma 0.83. So that's at 2.6 seconds um, is when I have my first, like, good data point. So now I can come over here and delete all the rows down to t equals 2.6. All right, there it is. Well, maybe we just prior to 2.6. We said 2.6 was our first good data point. All right, now we'll delete. All gone. Oh, no, where did my... My graph mysteriously disappeared. That's all right. We'll make a new one. That isn't supposed to happen. Maybe it's because I told it clear contents or delete instead of clear contents. Let's try that again. How about clear contents? Okay, that's better. Now our graph didn't disappear. Oh, but I've also got this other data here at the end. So that crap starts at about 4.45 seconds. So let's scroll down to 4.45. Whoa, 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 I'm way past all my data. Where'd it go? Oh, it's up here, 4.45. All right, so we'll highlight all that. Clear content so my graph doesn't disappear. My graph, oh, there it is. All right, now remember, in this case, I still also have these other couple of data points that I've got to trim out or they're really going to mess up my... Uh, my graph, so we've got 3.8 seconds is the beginning of the bad, and the last one is at 3.95. So let's go back down, find it, 3.8 to 3.95. Delete those four data points, clear contents. All right, and there's a pretty good-looking graph. I mean, it, it looks like a straight line. Yours will probably even look better than that, actually, because it's going to not just be you moving your hand in front of the sensor. All right, and so that was step three. Delete the crap, right? All the pre-motion and post-motion data points. Um, and then any noise. Like in that case, um, where there was the, the crap in the middle, it found something else, right? The motion sensor lost my hand found the ceiling or something, right? And so there you go, so it had some weirdness. Okay, now in this case, we have a linear graph. Not all of your graphs are gonna be linear, and so not all of them are gonna involve making a trend line. This one wants a trend line. Okay, so if we go back to it, um, now it might be nice at this point if I were using the exact same device you're using, 
And unfortunately, there's going to be differences between devices. So I, I can't control for that. On this particular Mac, over here, we have add chart element. Okay. On a PC, it's going to be, you know, Windows machine, it's going to be under insert to add your trend line. But for this particular one, it's add chart element. I don't know. They're always in slightly different places because different different devices. Um, if we go, so there, it has other options, right? More trend line options, even if we want. We want a linear trend line. All right, so you can see there, hey, look, it, it added a small dotted line. You can actually change how that's formatted um, if, if you want. No, no reason why we can't leave it like that, but let's, uh, we'll, we'll leave it like that for the moment. We could make it a solid line if we feel like it. All right, and again, there's gonna be some differences come up here depending on what device you're using. My trend line here is insufficient in one very important way. It has no equation displayed for it. In other words, I have no idea what the slope of my trend line is, and almost always it's gonna be the slope that I even care about. Every now and then the y-intercept also matters, but if I don't have the slope, I pretty much know nothing. It's just a, a extra couple of dots on the screen. This particular device format has chart trend line under it. All right, and so when I click on that, the formatting options for the trend line come up over here. On a PC, it's gonna be a little different. You'll go to layout and then under layout, it will give you an option to format the trend line, right? Now, trend line has other options, right? We said there's different types of trends it can explore. Like if I thought this was actually a, a polynomial, like maybe it was a, a parabola of some type, right? I could pick that and tell it what order polynomial to pick. Oh, I'm sorry. This is actually out of the screencast area. We're almost out of it. There, so now you, now you can see a little bit better what the format trend line options look like. Um, if we go down what, what we want to make sure we select is display equation on chart. That's awfully small, but you can make the font larger. And display R squared value on chart. What the R squared value is for, if you've never seen that, it's something from statistics. It tells you how good of a fit your trend line is for the actual data. So the fact that my R squared value is 0.9955 means, yeah, it's, it's almost linear. That's pretty good. On the other hand, if it were like 0.4 or 0.06 or something terrible like that, or even honestly 0.8 is not that good. That would mean that it was not not really a line, it's kind of a line, maybe, maybe not actually a line. Okay, so but this, this one's probably a line. Um, fine, so that that's how you get your trend line to go on there. Um, at this point, your graph is really almost completely formatted. So the only remaining things that you'd need to do would be to format the title and the axes. Um, you'll notice right now the axes have no labels. That's not cool. All right, well, probably, hold on, hold on a minute. Yeah, again, depending on your device, um, how you add axes is gonna be different. For It seems like for a, a PC, a Windows machine, it's gonna be everything's under layout. For here, we've got quick layout and we get several different options. So maybe I like this one. All right, maybe I actually want this one. Nope, not that one because it has no title. Oh my gosh, look at that. We have an axis title, an axis title, a title, and then this other legend thing over here that no one actually ever needs. Okay, so um, there are other things you could do for formatting from here, but really, this is a pretty good beginning for what we needed to do. All right, I hope that answers all your questions, apart from the fact that I am I might have been using a different computer from you. But hopefully you can figure out all of those minor differences that might be throwing you off. Again, if you need to see it for Sheets, I'm making another video that's going to cover Sheets and a different one for your iPad. Thanks.